Hi guys, here is MIH. In my last video, I said that I was working on a big organic project, and if it works, it's going to be legendary. Well, it didn't work. So let me start telling the sad story to you. I had always wanted to make some dehydrating agents such as acrochlorides or acid anhydrides. The first thing coming up to my mind is acetyl chloride, not only because it is a very versatile reagent itself, but also because so many people in the amateur community has tried to work out a cheap and easily accessible route to it, but with only limited progress. The main laboratory route is reacting glacial acetic acid with stuff like phosphorus pentachloride to chlorinate it, but those powerful chlorinating agents are difficult to get hold of. Just by chance, recently I've stumbled upon a paper that reports the use of trichloroisocyanuric acid, or TCCA, as a reagent in the synthesis of amides from aromatic alcohols and aldehydes. There was one thing that interests me the most. The paper mentioned that acrochloride is formed in situ as an intermediate, which means that I could react TCCA with an aromatic alcohol to form the aromatic acrochloride, and then use that to convert my acetic acid to acetyl chloride. I know this is a very roundabout route, so I had a lot of doubts if it will work. Still, both TCCA and benzoyl alcohol is just as cheap as dirt, and if this works, a long-lasting problem of the amateur chemistry community will be solved. So I started with a small skill test. I grinded 2 grams of TCCA into a powder and dissolved it in a small amount of dichloroethane, or DCE, that I distilled from paint thinner. This not-so-pure solvent might be a reason why the entire experiment failed, as the paper called for using DCM instead of DCE. After a few minutes of stirring, there are still some undissolved solids. TCCA has a large solubility in chlorinated solvents, so this could only be impurities. I deduced them to be inorganic bases like sodium carbonate, since my TCCA pool pills were advertised as quick release, and it releases a lot of gases when I try to dissolve it in water. The TCCA likely reacted with the sodium carbonate to form CO2, cyanuric acid, and sodium hypochlorite, which made the pills dissolve much quicker than pure TCCA. Anyways, I started adding some benzyl alcohol dropwise to the TCCA solution, and apparently nothing happened. I then added the entire pipette of benzyl alcohol into the beaker. After 5 minutes, the mixture started releasing some bubbles. It wasn't very fast, but at least it shows something is happening. In theory, the TCCA is supposed to oxidize the benzyl alcohol to benzaldehyde and then to benzoyl chloride in two stages, which release hydrogen chloride gas as a byproduct. The reaction quickly got much more vigorous, and I stirred the mixture to keep the bubbles down. Remember those bubbles as they're entirely responsible for a tragic disaster later on. I hovered a wet pH paper above the mixture and it quickly turned red, indicating an acidic gas forming which could only be hydrogen chloride. Also, some pale-like solids formed in the bottom of the beaker, which is supposed to be the cyanuric acid formed in the reaction. I guess that the reaction is quite successful, but I cannot prove that benzoyl chloride is actually formed. When I added water to a sample of the solution, there were no obvious reaction. But based on the fact that benzoyl chloride isn't very reactive to water, especially when dissolved in an organic solvent, I ignored this and proceeded to a large-scale experiment. The first thing I decided to do is to increase the concentration of the reactants to 5 times the original paper stated, because I really don't have that much solvent to operate the reaction at a reasonable scale. Looking back, it may also be one of the possible re reasons that the entire thing failed, but oh well. I measured out 80 grams of TCCA pellets and grinded them up in a blender. This step releases a lot of very noxious dusts, so be sure to do this in a well-ventilated area and wear a respirator. I then added 280 grams of the DCE, and immediately started dissolving the TCCA to give a yellow color. The mixture is stirred for 10 minutes to fully dissolve the TCCA into the DCE. It is very important to put some sort of cap on the beaker to limit the evaporation of the solvent. 10 minutes after, I section filtered the mixture. I initially used a piece of dry filter paper, and everything just passed straight through the funnel because the solvent did not soak into the paper. So I just have to wet the paper with a little bit of water, which lowers the yield slightly as TCC reacts with it. You can also see that the filtrate is slightly cloudy due to the cyanuric acid formed as TCC reacted with the water. After the filtration, I measured the mass of the residue and found it to be 50.3 grams, indicating that only 28.3 grams of TCC is in the solution. I then calculated the necessary quantity of benzyl alcohol to make the TCCA a 5% excess in amount, dissolved it in some DCE, and added it slowly to the TCCA solution under strong stirring. 
However, nothing happened at all. There are no color change or any gas formation. I even shined the beaker with some UV light and hoping it would produce radicals to initiate the reaction, but still nothing happened. So I proceeded to add in all the benzalkyl, and as you probably guessed, it led to a runaway reaction and subsequently a disaster. The foam flowed out of the beaker and onto my lab table, and remember that it kept releasing a bunch of hydrogen chloride as it goes. I turned my vent fan all the way up and ran out of the lab, and after a few hours of cuffing because all, of the, all the hydrogen chloride had breathed in, I returned and saw the DCE completely evaporated and the table covered in some white stuff, probably cyanuric acid and benzoic acid. Fortunately, I still have enough DCE for another experiment, so I quickly ran through all of the procedures just as before. This time I placed a mixture in a plastic box, and it quickly started to react, producing a bunch of cyanuric acid precipitate and releasing a lot of hydrogen chloride gases. I filtered the precipitate off and stored the filtrate temporarily. Maybe the bottle I stored it in has some residual water that reacted with the benzoyl chloride, assuming that it had actually formed, so that could also be a potential factor of failure. The next day, I set up a distillation apparatus and distilled until the temperature reaches above 80 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of the DCE. After the solvent distilled off, the liquid darkened, which indicates that my lab was, well, invaded by the god of yellow chemistry, and is obviously not a good sign. Still, with the last bit of hope remaining, I added in 20 grams of acetic acid. The acetyl chloride formed should distill off at around 50 degrees Celsius, and it did not. The temperature shot up to 90 degrees Celsius, and I started to smell some acetic acid in the distillate. So yeah, this big project was kinda a huge failure. I've told you guys everything I know, so you can replicate the experiment yourself. If there are any progress, please do not hesitate to comment under the video and announce your discovery. The next two video I post will be the synthesis of Lumino and the final optimized process on making perchlorates without electrolysis. See you soon!